toilet peeking through. Yeah! <laughs> Corner. One of the containers. <laughs> What's good, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Right today, we are going to reacting to the Skibbity Toilet Part Three, Episode Seventy, analysis and theories. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Hello, everyone. Elite cameraman here. Episode Seventy, Part Two, just dropped, yeah. and I'm going to be honest. I really wasn't expecting an episode like this with so much new info. And I wonder when we're going to see G-Man, though. G-Man, as I guessed in my earlier episodes, I guess we really one, got a glimpse of the origin of the Skibidi toilets, and it truly was shocking. Not only that, but we got reveals on some other crazy stuff too. Even though, as Boom revealed a couple days ago, there wasn't much action this episode, the amount of reveals was crazy. Yeah. And there is so much to talk about, so I'm going to stop yapping and start analyzing the second you like this video and subscribe. Anyways, here we go. This episode directly started with the ending of episode 70 part 1 and actually had the ghost cameraman that we saw in the last episode, which makes me wonder if they were a rendering mistake, or if there are actually ghost cameramen since nothing has been confirmed still, but I'll assume that they weren't there for now since there is no way to know if they were actually there. Mm -hmm. After this, we started hearing the destruction sounds more and more until a hole opened up in the ceiling. We were met by a cameraman, but sadly this blood has been killed and is being used as a trap Freaking now. decoy. This is kind of terrifying, to be honest, because the toilets are literally using dead bodies as decoys now. And with all the bodies they gathered until now, if they can create some tech, which I think is most likely, they might be able to make cameraman decoy robots or something similar to make crazier traps. After the bomb on the dead cameraman's back explodes, we can see that it had acid inside it because green smokes come out of it, and the toilet that threw it literally has a whole acid tank behind him, so it makes sense that he uses acid weapons. Yeah. But when he saw that it didn't really work, he instantly jumped down, and from the second he jumped down, I think it was safe to say that he himself is a decoy and is a bomb because he had the same <laughs> bombs the dead cameraman had on his back attached to his back as well. But instead of one, there are two with a whole tank. He instantly stabs one of the cameramen the second he jumps down, but it looks like the stun guns kind of work on him to some extent. I'm saying kind of because he was able to rotate himself, but not really make any other movements. Yeah. And the dark speaker man instantly shoots his eyes with knives, but the second this happens, this toilet suddenly starts his bomb sequence. Oh, we don't have to worry though, because this brave soldier who was just stabbed has not given up yet. And for the sake of his squad's survival, he pulls the toilet with him down to the hole before he explodes, saving everyone. Yo, the and cameramen are loyal, everyone, I ain't gonna lie. I meant the everyone because fired. that goddamn explosion was so bright, it was shinier than scientist toilet's bald head. You, brother, you truly are a real hero. Facts. We need more cameramen like you in the Alliance. You really don't have to worry because we'll never forget the great deeds you have done for the sake of the Alliance. Subscribe to pay your respects to our brave hero. After this explosion, Plunger Cameraman decides to take one of the weapons off the ground, and while they are all thinking about what just happened and what to do, the elevator starts shaking as if it's going to fall down, and they instantly start moving, starting with Dark Speakerman flying the two cameramen to the higher floor with his jetpack. Yeah. But our Plunger Cameraman with the Jigachad mindset literally jumps on the wall and stabs his new <laughs> spiky hands said, on it. the wall to climb the wall. I don't need the the Speakerman. And don't when he stops to look man. down for a second, the Dark Speakerman comes to help, which was a leaked frame that we saw a couple days ago, blood literally slaps Dark Speakerman's hand because of what happened a couple episodes back. If you guys don't remember in episode 69, part one, Dark Speakerman- I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I, I feel that, you know, that's his friend and stuff. But at the same time, it's like, you don't got to have any animosity. It feels like he just legit has animosity towards Dark um, Speakerman. I don't know about that, the hard bro. I feel like he's a liability because if, if he wouldn't have done the same the thing, the squad then that's the actually Jackson crazy. Toilet. And because of this plunger, cameraman was so mad at him. It looks like things between haven't cooled down a single bit, even though it's an extreme situation. And if I'm honest, plunger cameraman probably feels a lot more angry because it was a speakerman who closed down the door on cameraman. If one of the cameramen closed the door, he probably would have let it go a lot more easily. After getting up to the floor, they look at Lucky Cameraman, and he shows the way to go after checking it from his tablet. But if you look at Dark Speakerman in this scene, you'll see that he really does look sad after getting rejected by the Plunger Cameraman. It really must feel bad for him to be seen as the bad guy, even though he was just trying to protect the others and his best bro being mad at him because in episode 66, they had the craziest dab. But now that friendship is on the verge of collapsing. 
Needing to deal with his feelings in an intense situation like this must be a really huge toll on him, but blood will pull through. Have After to. this scene, we see the plunger cameraman taking out his plunger, and everyone starts moving, but they instantly start seeing huge toilets patrolling around the area trying to find the squad, so they close their flashlights and actually turn on their night visions. This is the first time we are seeing this and not gonna lie. It was kinda cool to see that. This was a feature on their camera, but sadly the electricity comes back right when they were next to one of the doors, and one of the toilets see them trying to sneak in and starts preparing an attack. But lucky cameraman starts opening the doors with his remote control, and on the right side we can actually see a text that says, Test Lab C-33-A. And I went to rewatch episode 33 to see if it was an Easter egg of some sorts, but there wasn't much to it since it was the episode where G-Man Toilet destroyed the YouTube HQ. If you think there is a hidden meaning behind it, let me know. Okay. After running through the hallway, Lucky Cameraman closes down all the doors and we actually see the door we saw on the first merch store leak two days ago. And as we guessed, this really was a very special room because the stuff that were revealed to us still blows my mind. After entering the room, the plunger cameraman looks around for a second, and we can see some many stuff, it's crazy. This place is like a collector's room where he hides his precious toys, and there is anything you can think of, but before we talk about these, did you notice that the mouthless toilet actually could be seen right when they enter the room? Plunger where? cameraman actually saw the mouthless toilet peeking through- Yeah! <laughs> Corner. One of the containers right Bruh. before he hid behind Bruh. to wait for the perfect moment, which is a creepy little detail Bruh. that you might have missed. That is the first two crazy. things we see are the two weapons inside the window cases, which are not clear in this frame, but later we can see that one of them is a knife that speakermen use, and the other is a spear. And I'm going to be honest if that spear belonged to anyone I don't remember. I don't remember seeing it ever. This also might mean that there is someone out there that uses spears as his or her weapon, which might be a foreshadow in itself. The next thing we see is one of the octopus arms. I may be wrong, but I first remember seeing them in episode 44, where the Titan TV man fought against a toilet with these arms. The next X is a huge knife, which I assume Titan Speaker Man used to have. I don't remember him losing a knife. In episode 65 and 67, we saw Titan Speaker Man's knives, but I don't know if it was exactly like this. And for this to be here, I feel like it has been here for a while. Next thing we see is the workbench on the left. And it's actually the same workbench we saw in episode 16 a long time ago, when the cameraman infiltrated the first ever Skibidi lab ever and after re-watching that episode, and seeing the picture on the wall and connecting the dots with episode 68 part two. The lore actually blew my mind. But I'll get into that in a second when we start talking about the big reveal in today's episode. Yeah. The next thing we see is I one feel of the like cameras this is from for the sure. spider camera. I just feel like this is for sure how somebody is built. Some people, from earlier episodes, some of the like toilets, episode some of the 22, were built. when they were fighting G-Man. Or this toilet. is how like, next the, to it like are probably the legs of it. And the right next to that is one of the jet to replicate from the Titans. The, but the um, most cameraman. shocking thing they have is on the top which is the actual arm of Titan Cameraman from episode 20 when he lost his arm for the first time. It's crazy that the toilets salvaged that. This really shows the dedication they have to improve because they probably have been using all these materials to reverse engineer it and make it better to use it themselves for upgrades. Yeah. Under the arm, there is something that looks like a core of some sorts, but I got no idea what it is. And next to it is one of the machines from episode 16 once again, also next to that is a huge speaker, which might be one of Titan Speakerman's old speakers. And lastly, there is a pair of sunglasses on a stand. But even though this whole room made us feel nostalgic, the craziness starts at this moment. Instantly, when Plunger Cameraman turns to his right, we see something on the wall. But first, Plunger Cameraman moves to the table and he sees a clipboard that has some Skibidi writing on it and two toilets, one being the scientist toilet and the other being one of the Astro, Astro toilet. toilets. We will never know what's written on here since it's in Skibidi language. But the one common thing in this image is the red eyes the scientist toilet and the astro toilets have. And I don't know why they are in the same clipboard here, but it does seem like they are being compared to one another. Or it might be because they both have red eyes. I'm not sure, but there is a chance that the red eyes entail something important. Also behind the scientist toilet, there seems to be some sort of a logo, but it's not clear at all. 
Only thing I know is that he probably will be losing his head next episode if it continues like this. What happened right after this moment will be remembered as the biggest reveal of Skibidi Toilet ever, because the next frame we saw has revealed more in just a few seconds than the entire 70 episode series have revealed so far. Plunger cameraman looks at a picture on the wall that's like a news snippet, and it says, Alpha Hills Labs gets new administrator. Government-sponsored underground laboratory assigned a new administrator. Details and reason for the deal remain in secrecy. February 7th, 1979. Before we talk about the picture itself. The date might either be February 7th or July 2nd, depending on which dating structure Dafuk is using, but we are going to go with February 7th because, weirdly enough, if you go to the first-ever Skibidi toilet video and check the upload date. It says February 7th, this probably is an Easter egg trying to say, this is Yo! when it all started, which means the man we That's see crazy. in this image, the new administrator, who is the secret agent we know of, uh -huh. is probably the real reason behind the Skibidi toilets. But it gets what? even crazier than that, because it looks like Dafuk has been planning this all along, and has been thinking of every small freaking detail. That's because crazy. if you look to the right of the secret agent, the baldy scientist we see can actually be seen in episode 16 as a normal toilet, who was working with the scientist toilet, who also can be seen again in episode 68 part 2, and is the upgraded toilet who killed our beloved large cameraman. I'm gonna be honest, the dedication to details in this series is crazy. Alongside this, I think the scientist on the farthest left was also in episode 16 as a toilet, but I'm not sure if it's the same person. What but the main thing of, we have to talk bro, about in this image is, is the two gentlemen toilet, in the middle. Bro. We all know who the secret agent is, but the man he is shaking hands with is actually one of the models Dafuk likes using a lot, and it's the male 09 model. For a while now, people have been guessing that male 09 will eventually have some sort of a role in the series, and I guess they were right because I don't think his journey would end here. I think this foreshadows the fact that he'll actually become a prominent part of the series and might be the nemesis for the secret agent because we got a couple possibilities. First of all, let's think of the reason why this lab got a new administrator in the first place. We don't know the real intentions of the secret agent, but it really doesn't seem like he is on the side of toilets, so the fact that he was a part of this experiment might mean that he came in too late. Maybe the government was aware that these scientists were cooking up something shady and assigned him to take control. But it was too late, and now he is trying to stop this whole mess. You also need to think about the fact that someone must have created the cameraman, speaker man, and TV man races, if Skibidi toilets were the result of an experiment. The same goes for the rest. Maybe secret agent, or if the roles were reversed, male 09 created them. We probably won't get the answer to this for a while, but this yeah. really is a cornerstone for the series. Bro. But there is one thing that's shady. There Lord. is no scientist I can lie. I like the Lord image, better which than is that weird, considering scenes, he is the scientist toilet. Also, this image explains why and how the secret agent is able to create all these tech devices that give him powers. It looks like he actually was a genius, and the reason he knows the bunker in and out is his past. But there is still one question remaining, and it is why he wanted to get in because in episode 68, part 2, we saw him teleport inside for something when the squad was looking inside the factory, and he gave a mission to the lucky cameraman. Right after looking at the image, Plunger cameraman turns to the lucky cameraman, and he is actually holding a book that has an image of a TV. And looking at lucky cameraman's reaction, this book may not have been stolen but given to the toilets because Lucky Cameraman really looked disappointed. I don't know what's inside the book, but it surely does look very, very old and might have some secrets inside which we probably will never get to see, at least in the near future. But there is also the chance that these were stolen. Either way, this room is full of mess-ups that the Alliance has made, and they can clearly see the reflection of their mistakes in the past. And what happens right after does not help them at all because suddenly the lucky <laughs> the cameraman gets guy. pierced through the back just like that. And we see the return of the mouthless claw toilet from episode 42. And it seems like he was hella upgraded because he not just his claws got upgraded, but now he has a whole TV monitor attached to him. Which means the TV we saw on scientist toilet wasn't a one-time thing and it's something they can probably mass produce. Yeah. The second one of the cameraman realizes his presence, he starts using the stun gun on him and it seems like it's working, but a stun gun doesn't work on a TV, so the upgraded claw toilet uses his <laughs> it's TV, like on monitor, pause the TV and we start seeing the death beam once again. 
and it looks like Defouque actually made some new VFX for this and shows us why the cameraman actually kill themselves when this beam is shown. What it actually say? I have no idea. He spams the words end yourself backwards infinitely until the person seeing it unalives themselves, which is crazy. Mm. And this scene was utterly terrifying. The fact that if Dark Speakerman wasn't there, Plunger Cameraman would have been killed is insane. But thankfully, Bro saves his best friend by pushing him, and Plunger Cameraman puts the lens protector he got from the large Why cameraman already... instantly to not be affected by the beam anymore. But hey. sadly, while this is going on, the cameraman with the stun gun kills himself, and this leaves the upgraded claw toilet free, and he starts attacking the Dark Speakerman. Thankfully, Plunger Cameraman throws his plunger in time and uses the dart gun he got earlier to shoot the claw toilet's eyes before smashing his head with the spiky plunger. Here, if you look carefully at the dark speaker man, we can actually see that his headphones are now broken, but the saddest scene in today's episode appear right after this, and it's the death of Lucky Cameraman. Mm. We see that he is lying dead on the floor, at least we think he is dead. Alongside this, his tablet is broken and has a message on it, but it's impossible to read. Plunger cameraman instantly takes the remote control, but I'm going to be honest, I think there is a chance that the secret agent teleports and saves the lucky cameraman because at the end of the day, he is still the lucky cameraman and was the only cameraman that had direct contact with the secret agent as far as we know until now. Even if this does happen, I don't think we'll see it for a long, long time. And if it does, once we do see it, the lucky cameraman probably would evolve into something completely new. After Plunger Cameraman looks at the body of the Lucky Cameraman, he hears the Dark Speaker Man breaking one of the cages to get a spear and decides to get some tools for himself as well, and it's the new Cameraman tools. But the question is, how do the toilets have this already? These upgrades were just given out to Cameraman probably a couple hours ago. This may seem small, but this might entail that there actually is a traitor in the Alliance who is giving info to the toilets, We'll talk more about this in a later episode, but after this scene, we basically see the duo the get ready to fight and start moving through the hallway, and the episode ends. Huh. I think we can safely assume that the next episode there will see some blood and see the fight with the scientist toilet. This episode was honestly a treat for us analysis YouTubers. Also, before I end the video, make sure to check my Skibidi Toilet Roblox game out if you haven't. It was released last week, and the first... That's interesting. A traitor in the midst of the cameraman bro I, oh my gosh the lore of this series just keeps on going and going oh my god hey man i cannot wait for episode 70 part three to drop as well as the theories and the analysis but if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you like subscribe comment down below join the discord server down below road to 80k we is almost there and without further ado love y'all and i'm gonna catch y'all later bro peace